So let's now concentrate on wireless B. This is a different kettle of fish. All together to that of the wireless A is very much relevant to dentists, dental therapists, hygienists, nurses, and doctors. Its genome is DNA, unlike the other hepatitis viruses, which are all genome or RNA. This is a DNA virus. Is hepatitis B virus serious? Yes, it can be. Mortality rate is 10% or so in epidemics, reasonably high, and not can it only produce chronic disease and chronic hepatitis. Some patients can become chronic carriers without contracting the disease, without producing liver disease. Now, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the structure of this virus. As I said to you, it's a DNA virus. And if it's a DNA virus, it must have the protein, the polymerase, in order to replicate itself, so it can cause damage and carnage. And indeed, the DNA of the virus and its polymerase, the protein, are in the nuclear capsoid of the virus. That, in turn, is covered by the core antigen. That, in turn, is covered by the little e, the early antigen. And on top of that, we have the surface antigen with these mushroom, spherical-like structures poking out of it. And when the hepatitis B virus invades the body through blood, through body secretions, through body fluids, it doesn't just target any old cell. It has a specificity against specific binding sites on the liver cells, on the hepatocytes, and it latches itself on these binding sites and it enters the hepatocytes via a process known as endocytosis. As soon as the virus is inside the hepatocytes, alarm bells start to ring, we've been invaded, there is an intruder inside. They're not just going to sit back and take this, they're going to send virus-specific cytokines into the bloodstream, little perfumes, little sonic waves, which in turn switches on the T lymphocytes to the liver in order to rescue the situation. This is the acute phase of hepatitis B virus. The T lymphocytes arrive at the liver, but they can't find the virus because the virus is inside the cell. They have got their big heavy hammers and they can't find the virus, so they start breaking the hepatocytes in order to get to the virus. As soon as the phospholipid cell wall of the hepatocytes is damaged and opened, the content of these hepatocytes are released into the bloodstream. The enzymes, one in particular is alanine amino transferase, A. LT and the other one is aspirate amino transferase, but it is the alanine amino transferase which we can measure and say that this patient is in acute phase of hepatitis B virus. So let's talk about the risk groups. As I said to you, blood and secretions, blood and body fluids, so that intravenous drug abusers because of contaminated syringes, because they share syringes, hemophiliacs because of factor VIII against syringes. That has stopped now because we routinely test the blood and the positives are thrown out. Renal dialysis, staff and patients again are at risk because of syringes, because of contaminated items. And if you've been to safari in Africa, and you've gone into labor or you've had a road traffic accident and you've had transfusions, you may contract the hepatitis B virus that way because in Africa they do not routinely test the blood for the hepatitis B virus. And in institutions, mentally handicapped institutions, where hygiene for some reason or other is poor. And prostitutions, because of semen, homosexual activity, heterosexual activity, any kind of sexual activity where there is an exchange of body fluids, you can contract it that way. It is not 
a disease of dentists, doctors, nurses and health workers and the chances of you picking it up is very remote. So that blood and haemophilia, blood and renal dialysis, blood and transfusion, blood and dialysis, semen and prostitution, semen and homosexual and heterosexual activity. That is how it all fits together. How do you know somebody has virus B? Well, you look for the surface antigen, the hepatitis B surface antigen. There's something else you look for though. You look for the little e, the early antigen. And why would you do that? Because it tells you whether the patient is infected. So the examiner will come up to you and say, how do you know this patient has virus B and is a danger to you? You say, I look for the surface antigen, the hepatitis B surface antigen, and for infectivity, I look for the little E antigen.